time getting the message about the testing. Why is the testing so crucial? You have to know where the enemy is. You know, this is a war. I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thanks for joining us. A month after the Trump administration changed how COVID-19 data gathered by hospitals is reported, the release of that data has slowed to a crawl, according to the, to the Wall Street Journal. Testing and test results in the U.S. lag behind other developed nations. All this as the U.S. reported the most coronavirus-related deaths in one day since May. After weeks of pushing for schools to reopen, the White House is only now offering to supply millions of masks. Tens of millions of Americans whose benefits ran out weeks ago remain casualties of Washington gridlock. Democrats, Republicans and the White House all say there are no plans to even come to the table in the coming days. The virus continues to spread at high rates across the Midwest, West and Southern U.S. President Trump held a photo op in the Oval Office today, heralding a major diplomatic achievement between the United Arab Emirates and Israel. He also continues to lash out at political opponents and undermine the credibility of mail-in voting. A short time after a top CDC official said this autumn could be the worst on record from a public health perspective, Joe Biden made a public plea. Every single American should be wearing a mask when they're outside for the next three months at a minimum. Every governor should mandate, every governor should mandate mandatory mask wearing. Be a patriot. Protect your fellow citizens. Protect your fellow citizens. Step up. Do the right thing. Do the Thing. For more on this, I want to bring in Caitlin Huey Burns and Tamara Keith. Caitlin is a CBSN political reporter, and Tamara is a White House correspondent for NPR and host the, of the NPR Politics Podcast. Welcome to you both. Uh, Caitlin, let me start with you. This is now the second joint appearance uh, from the Biden Harris ticket. What did we hear from them? What are we learning about their message? Well, Elaine, campaigns are usually a test of hypotheticals. What would you do in a pandemic? What would you do in an economic crisis? But during this time, these two candidates, Biden and Harris, are getting a real-time test for commander-in-chief and potential vice president. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We have a huge finance, financial crisis. If they were elected, they would inherit both of these things. And so what they are trying to do with their joint appearance today is kind of show what their version of governing would look like and be like. So they heard uh, from health officials today. They got a briefing. Biden has said that several times a week he is getting a briefing uh, by uh, health officials. So they were trying to kind of show how they would operate uh, if they were in charge. You mentioned at the top that he advocated for um, wearing masks for the next three months and said that they would mandate that over the next three months, urging um, uh, governors to start doing that now. Um, they did not take questions from the press. We're hoping that they will do so at further events. Uh, but this was a way for the campaign to show a united front and to kind of show how they would govern in times like this. Uh, Tamara, let me turn to you and ask about these economic relief talks. I mean, it's now been two weeks since those benefits stopped for millions of Americans. Is there any hope here for those stalled negotiations? Yeah, talks might be a generous word to describe what's going on at this point. Uh, you know, the, the president over the weekend signed those executive actions. The White House has been pretty plain about the fact that it would be much better if they could get a deal with Congress in terms of actually getting things done. Uh, but uh, the president has those executive actions to point to, to say that he's done something. And, and it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of interest in truly making a deal at this point. And, and President Trump uh, on Fox Business this morning was, and he did it yesterday in his briefing as well, was, was complaining about uh, 
the what Democrats wanted, complaining that Democrats wanted too much money for the Postal Service. And and he kind of said the quiet part out loud, saying that if the Postal Service doesn't get that money, then how would it be possible for them to do universal vote by mail, which is something that he uh, opposes. Right. A lot of people raising their eyebrows um, after that statement. Um, Caitlin, I want to ask you about this poll out today from Monmouth University, uh, which found most Americans think that the U.S. handling of the pandemic is worse than other countries, and 53 percent of Americans do not approve of, of the president. What does that say um, as we get closer here to the presidential election? Well, we've seen in our own CBS News battleground tracking poll in key battleground states that um, the president's low approval when it comes to the coronavirus is really fueling support for Joe Biden. For example, over the weekend, we saw a poll in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, voters uh, disapproving of the way things are going right now and those voters supporting Biden for president. And what was really interesting to me in that survey is that uh, Donald Trump still continues to have an edge over Biden when it comes to the economy. Um, it seems like voters are willing to give the president the benefit of the doubt, kind of uh, supporting this argument that the White House and the reelection campaign have been making, which was that the economy was booming before the pandemic. Uh, so voters are still uh, giving positive grades to the president on the economy, even af as it putters out. But interestingly enough, that's not enough to uh, boost support for him overall. Instead, voters are saying that the handling of the coronavirus pandemic is bigger than anything else, is tied to the economy, of course, and he's getting poor grades for that, and that's helping to fuel the support of his opponent, at least at this stage in the race. Um, uh, Tamara, let me ask you about uh, what we saw at the White House today, um, an event in which President Trump made a number of claims about the Middle East, also about uh, defeating ISIS. Can you give us just a bit of a fact check here? Break down some of these claims for us, um, because there are a lot of folks who will only hear his part of that message and not understand the broader context here. So um, the White House has really rolled out this agreement. Uh, it's sort of an agreement to begin working on a formal agreement uh, between uh, the UAE and Israel. Um, and, and certainly it, it is a, a moment, it is a milestone, but you had the national security advisor saying that maybe President Trump should get the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, so um, it, they, they, are, they are definitely boosting this beyond what it actually is. The White House is also saying that they would, they would like to announce more deals uh, between Israel uh, and, uh, and Arab nations uh, as, as time goes on. Um, it's not clear how that would happen or when. Um, and as you say, the president says that he fully defeated ISIS. Um, that's that's not true. Um, ISIS is still around. Um, you know, the, President Trump uh, has a tendency to um, over overinflate his accomplishments. And, and just to be clear, so it sounds like you're saying if it's an agreement to have an agreement, it's a very preliminary kind of point in this process. Is that fair to say? Yeah, it, there, there are talks that are still necessary to happen to actually have the agreement and have something to sign on the dotted line. But this is the beginning of a conversation between two nations that um, have had, they, they don't have normalized relations, certainly, but they do have, um, you know, a relationship. They have been, uh, you know, having some interactions. Uh, this would formalize something more. But, you know, they have to negotiate on, on flights resuming or business relations or, or other matters like that. Right. We're talking about Israel and the United Arab Emirates, uh, yes. which was the focus uh, of that event. Um, so, Caitlin, let me ask you, the president has announced that the government will send up to 125 million reusable face masks to schools to help them reopen. Now, this comes despite uh, numerous times the president says he himself would not wear a mask. Let's go ahead and listen to some of that.